about specific incidents, specific events um, in or uh, around the fateful day, it just um, it just raises a lot of questions. The questions Charlie Sheen is raising about the 9-11 attacks are raising a lot of eyebrows. Our email inbox immediately started to overflow, and the coverage on Showbiz Tonight is getting a lot of attention. The website 9-11 Blogger calls Showbiz Tonight's coverage, quote, the first time a major news station has covered 9-11 questions in any reasonable format. It all started with a radio interview Sheen gave to GCN Radio Network host Alex Jones, a cult hero of sorts to 9-11 conspiracy theorists. Well, during the interview, Sheen made clear that he backs Jones' views. We're not the conspiracy theorists on this particular issue. It seems to me like, you know, 19 amateurs with box cutters taking over four uh, commercial airliners and hitting 75% of their targets. That feels like a conspiracy theory. Sheen also made another shocking suggestion that we may not know the full story about the collapse of the World Trade Center. I have a hard time believing that a fireball traveled down the elevator over 1,100 feet and still had the, um, the explosive energy to destroy the lobby like it was described. I said, hey, ca call me insane, but did it sort of look like those buildings came down in a, in a controlled demolition? When I was your age, I could only dream about my parents splitting up. <laughs> As the star of the hit sitcom Two and a Half Men, Sheen is seen weekly by about 10 million people, and many of them may end up paying attention to his controversial comments on 9-11. Welcome back to Showbiz Tonight. I'm AJ Hammer in New York. This is TV's only live entertainment news show. We have been getting an overwhelming response to our Showbiz Tonight question of the day. We've been asking, Charlie Sheen speaks out. Do you agree there is a government cover-up of 9-11? Here's the vote so far. 67% of you say yes, 33% of you say no. Some of the emails we've received includes one from Jennifer in North Dakota. She writes, Charlie Sheen has no evidence, and it is a shame that celebs get their voice and opinions heard because of their status. We also heard from Danny, who lives in Kentucky. Danny says, God bless Charlie Sheen for standing up and speaking his mind on what is the most devastating event to hit our nation, 9-11. We also heard from Chris in Ohio. Chris writes, this is a very important issue that must be brought into the mainstream. It is our patriotic duty to make sure we find out why and how 9-11 happened. We were talking about Charlie Sheen and all yeah. the comments, and I just have to get your take. I mean, you seem a little blown away that he would come <laughs> forward. Well, it's impressive. I mean, it's impressive for somebody in any kind of high-profile position to challenge the government when you're getting average people, you know, slandered for any kind of opposition. Would you ever do something like that? I probably wouldn't. I usually keep my politics to private conversations, but I appreciate the fact that he's prepared and coming out and saying this is something. And I like that he says... Uh, if you want to investigate anything, investigate the facts. Don't try and turn it around on me, which is what's been happening so much with this administration. Anybody who challenges anything with a reasonable challenge gets slandered and criticized for, for, any, for, being, uh, for opposing. What do you make of, of a, an actor of his stature coming out publicly like that? I think he's a brave man to even question this aloud in an environment where people have been saying that anyone who questions the government is a traitor. So Charlie Sheen has done his homework, and he's asking questions. He's speaking truth to power, which is a brave thing to do. Look, the young people in my family, my nephews, for example, have been saying for the past three, four years that we are not learning everything about 9-11 that we're meant to learn. And specifically, they've been saying that if you read all the different websites, if you're really careful, what you discover is that a lot of facts don't add up. And even if a modicum of what is being put out there, all these conspiracy theories, even if a piece of that is true, we have a responsibility, don't you think, to, to be asking it. the questions and to be doing the investigation? I think it's very patriotic to investigate it. This is Tom DeLong from Angels and Airwaves. When you, when you kind of piece apart the, the way the buildings exploded, it, it it seemed to echo the way big buildings are uh, demolition. 
we can describe that two weeks before 9-11, there was teams of people that were entering the World Trade Center doing things that were unknown to most, shutting off the security systems and, and whatnot. We do know that the buildings were made to withstand incendiary temperatures thousands of degrees more than what was happening when, when it all went down. We do know that the buildings came down in a fashion extremely similar to a controlled demolition of a building. There's no possible way that it could have happened the way they describe. And we're talking about 60, 70 percent of the American people are actually starting to think that there's a different story. Why are we as Americans sitting back and letting this happen to us? I think that uh, this is a, a huge challenge for Americans to not let them be defined this way and to actually stand up and do something that can that can not only better our own life, but better the world. My next guest is a man who needs no introduction. He is the host of Sunday news program, Meet the Press. Tim Russer, thanks for joining us on Deadline Live. A real pleasure to be here. Tim, do you know that Morgan Reynolds, former chief economist of the Department of Labor under George W. Bush, has come out and said he thinks 9-11 was an inside job? So has Ray McGovern, CIA analyst who briefed both Bush and Reagan, Paul Craig Roberts, deputy secretary of the Treasury, father of Reaganomics, and among others, Lieutenant Colonel Bob Bowman, who was a former director of advanced space programs development under Ford and Carter. And these are some pretty heavyweight people. These aren't conspiracy theorists, Tim. These are some heavyweight people that worked under these major administrations. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll leave their judgments and opinions to them, and I obviously have done my reporting and, and, uh, and offer the truth as I see it. A lot of people would like to learn more about this. Obviously, I don't think we got everything out of those investigations, the 9-11 investigations that we would need in order to determine a, a multitude of wars. Mm -hmm. That's pretty important stuff, don't you think, Tim? Well, uh, is it possible we can have you uh, get one of these guys on your uh, CNBC program? Tim, are you with me? Tim Russert. Tim, are you with me? Oh we just gosh. witnessed some kind of secondary uh, follow-up explosion on the oh, World Trade Center number two, the Washington. Secondary. There was another major explosion. The, build, the building itself, literally the top of it, came down, sending smoke and debris everywhere. Just seconds ago, there was a huge explosion, and it appears right now the second World Trade Tower has just collapsed. There were two or three similar huge explosions, and the building... Uh, literally shook. You literally shook at the base of this building. We understand now there has been a secondary explosion on Tower 2. What happened was I was down in the basement. All of a sudden we heard a, a, a loud bang. And the elevator doors blew open. Some guy was, was burnt up. So I dragged him out. His, his skin was all hanging off. There was a uh, heavy-duty explosion. This one, the boom, was like a bomb went off. Then there's like secondary explosions and then the subsequent collapses. We've heard reports of secondary explosions after the aircraft impacted. I was about five blocks away when that I heard uh, explosions, three thuds, and turn around to see the building we just got out of, antenna tip over and fall in on itself. Federal agencies that were down there do believe that there was some sort of explosive device somewhere else besides the planes hitting. See, I got uh, an eyewitness who said there was an explosion on floor 7 to 8. 7 8. <laughs> We got another explosion on the tower, 1013, 1013. Number two, and it's a major explosion and what appears to be a complete...